Joining me today to discuss the answer to the question, can Christians be demon-possessed, is our brother in Christ, Dave Jenkins, who's the executive director of Servants of Grace and the author of books about how to study the Bible. Dave, thanks so much for joining us and for answering this important question. Can Christians be possessed by demons? No, uh, no Christian can be um, indwelt by a demon because we have been born again. Um, at the moment of our conversion, we are given the Holy Spirit and he comes to indwell us. And so the Holy Spirit uh, lives inside of us and he is helping us to know the truth and and God by his grace, what, through what we call the means of grace, he's using the word and that we hear and study and meditate and memorize, and he is taking it and drilling it down deeper and deeper into our lives. There's no way for a Christian to be indwelt by uh, a demon. In Colossians 1.13, Paul says, God delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And so salvation brings with it true a deliverance and protection from Satan. And in Romans 8.37, Paul says, we are overwhelmingly conquerors uh, through Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15.57, he says, God gives us the victory. In 2 Corinthians 2.14, he says, God will always lead us in triumph. In 1 John 2, 13, John says, we have overcome the evil one. And in 1 John 4, 4, he says that the indwelling Holy Spirit is greater than Satan. So how could anyone affirm these glorious truths and yet believe that, uh, believe that demons can indwell genuine believers? Paul says this, interestingly, in 2 Corinthians 6, 15 through 16, what harmony has Christ with Belial, or, or what a, has a believer in common with an unbeliever, or what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Um, God says that he has delivered us, speaking about believers, from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And so how could anyone affirm these glorious truths and yet believe, believe demons and dwell believers? The answer is we cannot, in Colossians 1.13, from the kingdom of darkness king, to the kingdom of Lord Jesus. And so there's no way for a believer to be indwelt by uh, demons. Now, in Matthew 12, Christ rebuked those who were following him just for the sake of witnessing greater signs and miracles. In uh, Matthew 12, 43 through 45, it says, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through the waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. And then it says, I will return to my house from when it comes, it will find it unoccupied, swept and put in order. And then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. And so instead of focusing on spectacular signs and wonders, Christ addresses their need for salvation. And many people appear, even religious people, they appear to have their lives all in, in, in line and in order, and it's all a facade. And Christ knows he sees the true condition of the heart of man um, and that they might not have trusted in Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, their souls are unoccupied. That is, the Holy Spirit does not indwell them. Uh, they're open to demonic invasion, and uh, they might even have emptied themselves and become a tool and a device uh, and an agent of Satan through automatic writing. And uh, that is wickedness, and that is abhorrent to the God of the Bible. And so that that cannot be true of those who are indwelt by um, and whose bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, as we considered from 2 Corinthians 6.16. And according to 1 Peter 1.5, when Christ reigns in a person's life, that person is kept by the power of God. That's the point of Romans, by the way, Romans 8.31-39. through 39, It repeatedly four or five times tells us we are kept by the power of God. And so as a result, the evil one does not touch him, as 1 John 5.18 says. And so lastly, one last thought. When the Holy Spirit inhabits a person, no demon can set up a house as a squatter. Uh, and dwelling by demons is evidence of a lack of genuine biblical salvation. So it's possible for unbelievers to be possessed by demons, but not those who've been indwelt by the Holy Spirit through their faith and their trust in Jesus and the grace and mercy of God in their salvation. Amen. But believers can be oppressed, or it's an old-fashioned word, obsessed 
by demons. So you could have demons around you causing havoc. That's spiritual warfare, right? That's different than possession. Yeah, exactly. We That's why we're to take up the armor of God. And by the way, it's interesting um, in Ephesians 6, one thing that we often miss about that passage, we always focus on, you know, either praying or whatever. But actually, the only reason that we can put on the armor, Paul says in that passage, is that we're in Christ. It, we're in him. We're in the Lord. And it's really interesting because that's something that's often missed in teaching on that particular subject and the language is is that we are hit the language of in christ in him in the lord is that we belong to him he is ours and we are his and so that is hugely significant that means that we can take up the armor of god because we have one who as the bible tells us very clearly he is a warrior and he goes before us and um, he's already won we know the victory we can stand as first corinthians 15 tells us you know, in the grace and knowledge of our of our Lord, and which were Second uh, Peter three eighteen tells us to grow in the grace and knowledge of God, and so all this means uh, uh, even even in First Peter five um, verse six, before he says in verse seven to cast your cares on the Lord, he says that we're to humble ourselves before under under God's mighty hand, and then as a result of doing that, cast our cares on the Lord, and so. In the midst of spiritual warfare, we can, we are in him, we're in the Lord, we're in Christ, uh, we can trust him, we're his, he is ours, and so that's that we fight not from a place of defeat, but actually a place of great strength and, and, and uh, victory, not because of ourselves, not because we're sufficient, but because Christ is, is sufficient, and it's Christ in us, Christ through us, it's, it's always about Christ. Um, and so he's we we trust him, and so that's that's really really good news. You know, your Lord is there to help you in the midst of your anxiety, discouragement, depression, grief, bitterness, doubt, questions, and on and on. He's going to help you. Um, oh, the question is, are you going to call on him for that help that he provides? And by the way, Ephesians one, just one more thought. <laughs> the Ephesians one is actually one long sentence in the Greek. And there, Paul tells us that the grace of God super abounds to us. It abounds and abounds and abounds. And that doesn't mean that you get to live however you want to live. It means that you're putting your sin to death, as uh, Romans 6.11 tells you, to consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God uh, through Christ. Um, this is what the Holy Spirit is helping you to do. You do that by putting on Christ, putting on him, putting off the flesh, putting the sin to death through the means of grace, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Um, when, so when you have those thoughts of lust or temptation or discouragement or whatever, read your Bible, read your Bible. Uh, take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ, Second Corinthians 10, 5. And uh, the Lord will help you. Thank you so much for helping us with this issue, Dave. We really appreciate your time.